Yummy, another Yummy is there. <laughs> Where? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is Yummy is from National Chung University. Now from National Chung University. He's going to talk about the uh, overview of uh, experimental animal physics. And 20 GB 
200 GB for local collisions. There are two main uh, detectors in the rig. The first one is Phoenix, where they stopped op all operating next year, and the other is Star, which they are taking data and we are planning to run on until 2023 or 2024. So Star is an international collaboration with almost 650 collaborators from 65 institutions, and this is the map of all of the collaborators, and let's see here is one of them. We joined the start in 2015. There's many issues for doing that. So I'm going to show a short video of what are the star, what is the star detectors. So in the very uh, center we have the heavy paper tracker, which can measure the position of the track very precisely, so we can identify secondary particles. Then the heart of the star detector is the time of uh, time position chamber, TPC. We can measure the track, and then with the off, and outside is the electromagnetic calorimeters. The outside is the new installed uh, neon detectors. So we, we can measure both electron candidates or muon candidates, and many hydrons. And then in 2010, or actually it's observed in 2009, we find the first strange anti-matter, anti anti-hyper-triton, anti-hydrogen with uh, anti-triton and with the, what the u clock replaced by the s clock. So we, have, we observe this nice event in the global collision at 20 GeVs. And then we also report the first anti-helium-4 nuclei in the global collision in 200 GeV and 62 GeV. So I'm going to talk about how we do that in the, in the next few slides. So as promised, I'm going to show a video for the engine demons. I'm going to just show a little bit. So this is not star, it's actually the Atlas detectors. So but you can see, we never have this uh, nice uh, com control room. We actually have a nice problem in the star control room. But Clear 
short uh, uh, event for pion, kion, proton, neutron, uh, uh, triton, and and then helium three, and then helium and helium three and helium four. So this was positive uh, charged particles, and you can have the negative charged particles. So this is the end particle of it. So you can see clearly we have few events, four events below one uh, one point four GeV. So we can separate pretty well from the eta helium three. However, in the high PT, uh, high monitor region, everything merged together. So how to do that? Fortunately, we installed the time of fire detector in 2009. I think right after that, we successfully take data and have this very nice result. Once you have the timing information for the particles, you can easily to uh, calculate the mass by using this formula. It's the time of fire, and it's the path length. You can assume the particle pass through the distance. You can get mass. And this is the one, uh, one of the uh, units for the energy loss. You think about for the helium particles who are constantly at zero, other of the other particles who are country outside the zero. And this the x axis is mass. So you can see here is the energy helium free candidates they concentrate for the, these energy loss parameters around minus two. We have several events concentrate around zero and the mass is wrong is at the right positions. So we have sixteen events and a helium four event in these uh, regions. And the orange is the helium four and the blue is the helium. Once you get these uh, events, you can calculate the differential invariant yield as a, as a function of barium numbers. You can see all of them line up with the exponential function pretty well. So from this measurement, you can see uh, the ratio for n helium four to n helium three is about uh, three factor, uh, three mag magnitude lower than n helium three productions. So you can easily extrapolate what's the next stable n matrix. You can easily to make a line or this exponential line to the minus six barrel number particles. You can see there will be a factor of six lower production rate than n helium four. So that's well way beyond our uh, accelerator technology. So it's probably we won't see this stable anti-matter in the foreseeable future. Okay, so that's for the anti-helium 4 at the start. So let me show one more interesting re a, a result we had last year. So we report uh, first of all, observation of the global polarization for the lambda hadrons. So we also uh, do it in the uh, global collisions were in various energies, actually in the low energies. So we find the uh, global polarization is very is much larger than we expect. Then if you translate this polarization, you can you can say the uh, vertically for this uh, liquid is very very fast. So we actually we claim we find the fastest fluid in the world. So what's for the future for STAR? So STAR is going to upgrade our detection capability in the very four regions because we want to study this global polarization or other interesting physics in the futures. So we are going to make uh, forward detectors including uh, three layer of silicon trackers. So NCKU, UIC, and the Sandman University is working on this. And also the STGC detectors is same as the Atlas detectors. Then outside the main stuff we have the EHO magnetic parameters and the hydrogen parameters to measure the energies for the forward particle. So once we have this in installed, we can have more uh, data to show. So what's next? So I mentioned we also participate in other experiments, the AMS. So one biggest question is where is the anti-particles? So if we naively think in the, in the big, from the Big Bang theory, so we can produce the part of anti uh, matter and antimatter in the same amount. So uh, matter evolves in this direction, so where is the antimatter? So the AMS is actually supposed to look at any antimatter in the 
cosmos. So the AMS is alpha magnetic spectrometers is a precision particle detector in space to study antiparticle particles asymmetry and any new physics. For example, the dark matter or something new. Actually, if you look at carefully from the star result or the anti-helium 4 result, it's told us the uh, interaction rate for this anti-helium from the nuclear-nuclear interaction will be very low. So anything we observe from the in the space will indicate uh, there should be somewhere have a uh, large amount of antimatter in the universe. So that's very important. And we have also many collaborators in the AMS. Uh, Taiwan have Ekta uh, Sinica, Dong uh, Yuan, and the National uh, Secretary Party and us. And you can see there's all the collaborators. AMS-01 actually is the first prototype because AMS projects uh, proposed in 1995 and after three years they built the first prototype. So they flew with the space shuttle for ten, uh, actually for more than 10 days, but they came for 10 days. The main goal for the AMS-01 actually is to prove the detector concept in the in, in the space. The AMS-02 is a complete new detector actually. It's a TP precision detectors and it's launched with the space shuttle Endeavour in May 2011 and we have the first result in 2012. So it's the Endeavour and it's the AMS detector installed on the space stations. So NASA actually made, made a very nice <laughs> documentary for this AMS project. I strongly recommend everybody to watch that because I watch five times. I show to my students all the time. So it's very, very nice documentary to tell you, you how same team to, to, to fight to, to, to that AMS project to go, 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 to go forward. So the AMS is a very large pattern, but it's smaller compared to the LC experiment. It's five meters tall and four and three meters wide in length. But the weight is 7.5 pounds. So we have several detectors that I want to talk about later. We have several subcomponents like the magnet that can get particles, so AMS can identify particles and other particles. And also the transition radiator, radiation detectors can identify the electrons and the, and the positrons. Also, we have also a type five to measure the velocity, and also we can reject the particle from the ongoing <coughs> events. Sitting trap is the main detector to measure the traps and identify particles. Also, we have other like uh, green imaging triangle, uh, parameters, and anti coincidence detectors. We don't want particle uh, record it from the side event. So, the main uh, particle identi identification detectors are DRD. Silicon trackers, you can, they can measure the charge of the particle and momentum. Combine them, you get you got the rigidities. Also, the electromagnetic e e parameter can measure the energies for electron and positron, or any particle, the electromagnetic e e interactions. Also, the green triangle detector can measure the energies or the velocities, and the top can measure the velocities. So, after now, after seven years of running, we, we took more than 130 billion cutting is much more than the cutting rate event took in the past 100 years. So this is the record we have in December 6th this year. So with these plots, the statistics, how to an analyze the data will be very, very important. So I'm going to just show some online uh, highlight with a result that I'm not going to talk about any details. So this is the partial flux, uh, partial flux. You can see its energies and the flux. You can see this partial event raising up and it got turned over. Then we try to fit by some model we call it 1.2 TeV. Uh, but matter is fit perfectly well. Also, if you look at the partial fractions, you can see also it has a turning down. So if we have this error bar shrink by a factor of maybe five, we can just no, it's 
the, the behavior of this uh, turning curve. Uh, also, we have the end of proton to proton uh, 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 ratios. The best result we get one more point. So, in previous we up to here. So, we, now we have at least one point. You can see this uh, behavior is very similar to one of the half metric uh, models. So, that's for the new physics. Now, the anti matter search. So, the main goal for AMS is actually to search for anti helium 4 in space. So by now we have eight events observed in the mass re uh, region from zero to ten GeV of C square, with the Z the charge equal to minus two, and the rigidity is P is energy over charge less than fifty G GV. So all these eight events, we have six events within the helium three mass and two events within the helium four four mass. So right now we, we can count the event rate is one anti helium per Hundred million heliums. So how to make sure we really see these anti heliums? We have to run many, many Monte Carlos. So we use 50 million core hours to generate seven times more than they, uh, more than the data uh, Monte Carlo more than data to estimate how many background are fluctuate into our mass window. So we find nothing here. We can calculate the probability of background fluctuate in this single region is three times ten to the Eight. However, if you only look at the uh, helium-4 events, this, if we have more computing powers, we can go down to 3 times 10, 10 to the minus 3. So if we can run the AMS up to 2024, uh, 20, then we have other st uh, statistics, we can have the result go down to 10 to the minus 9, or minus, minus, sorry, minus 7 level. So it's about 5 sigma. So I'm going to show one event on AMS. It's a track recorded by the AMS. You can see the heat in the TRD and also in the tracker and this the reach and also the E and the ECAL. The charge we get is 2.0 and the mass is 3.31. The heat and fall mass is, is, is within the uncertainty. So it's very, very clear candidates we got one and a half four events. So what's next? So next is we have, so we can also search for heavier antimatters. So this MS detectors, so I mentioned we have several silicon trackers. So the layer one is on the top, and we have layer two and uh, three to eight, this layer nine. So if we require the effect to pass through all the way from layer one to layer eight, we have restrict phase space or acceptance. So we are, the statistics will be much lower. However, if we, we not require the layer one, we only require layer two up to layer eight, so we can have much larger acceptance, so we can have more events. So, until 2024, we will have about 100 million carbon and oxygen events, so we can study the anti carbon and the anti oxygen data. I will be very excited to see the, uh, new, the new result. So, what's next for the AMS experiment? So, we are working on an upgrade, or we have to cannot go to upgrade because they are not allowed to call this upgrade because the Professor Tim Thomas DOE will not do any upgrade for AMS. So we are called the uh, repairment. So the tracker I, I, I mentioned is very important detector in AMS because it can measure the charge, the momentum, and everything. Once the tracker is functioning, then we cannot do anything. So we have a dedicated system to control the temperature for these trackers. We call it uh, tracker thermal control system, TCS. So we can make the uh, temperature to be constant around 10 degrees, 10 Celsius. So this the blue line, the scoring factor temperatures, you can see vary from uh, minus five to 20, and even out and even outside will be much colder and hotter during the opening the sun. Up in the first. So after seven years operational in the natural space stations, 
we have four pumps and 300 have some problems. So in order to keep this tractor working, so we have to upgrade oh, sorry, to, re to, to repair this DDCS system. So it's we call the upgraded tractor thermal pump system, the DDPS. So this is an external system we have to install on the AMS. So we have to, we, we have, we have to ask the astronaut to do the EVA, the extra vehicular activities, to install the uh, box on the AMS. So that's a very complicated procedure. You have to cut line, you have to do uh, many, many different, because in principle, we don't, so we, so we didn't think we are repair AMS, so everything is packed very tightly. So then the NASA spent a lot of time to design the tool and everything to try to finish this project. So this is what we have. It's a UTTPS box, so we are working on NZKU and, and the AIDC Tanjiang are working, working on these radiators. So it's me, if we have some issues in Germany, so we have looked to the radiator itself. Okay, almost done. So the future of the AMS. So this UTTPS system will be finished and tested in early next year. So maybe finished around April and we'll send everything to NASA and we'll install on this AMS space station in the late 2019. So AMS will continue through the lifetime of uh, internet space stations of around 2024 and somebody also talked about 2028. So once we get that, we have double state uh, uh, statistics. So the data will be much precise and we are, have more chance to see Centimetric events. So the new generation or next generation of MS under consideration because somebody talked about to put a particle detector in the L2 point to have better uh, data collections. So let me summarize my talk in the end. So we know there's a, a particle or a matter in our in our world. So many experiments are dedicated to search of them. Rig actually is a perfect a particle machine. To, to, to create an particle and star is a good detector to, to, to observe that. MS is created in all the anahelion candidates and hopefully we can have a new result <coughs> soon. So I summarized the uh, a particle history by this diagram. We discovered the Ultron in 1932, and then 1955, 1956, and then both the neutron and the lambda in 58, 65, and the neutron and 1975 anti-3 and up to anti-helium we discovered in 19, uh, 2011. Thank you. Now for questions. Uh, so, uh, barring the more exotic scenarios, just considering things like uh, uh, just neutron star collisions or uh, things like the astrophysical process. Uh, how many, uh, uh, what is the per, uh, fraction of this uh, anti uh, helium 4 is expected? Have someone uh, done that calculation? I remember I heard the number, but it's not in the top of my head. I remember somebody talked about these numbers. I think it's 10 minus 3 to the anti helium. We back to check. Yes, it's much three compared with the helium four. Uh, sorry. Uh, minus three is here, so it's, it's smaller than this number. Maybe minus two. I need to check. I think it's much. It's larger. It's smaller than this number. This ten to the three, right? So I remember it's, it's, it's smaller. Back to check. Uh, for the AMS. You should get more high energy beams for the like, electron flux or the positron fractions very soon? Yes, we, have, we actually have a paper on the way for the new positron result. Yes. And um, how high would the energy be? When I think 800? Uh, well, above, I think it's just slightly above 20. Okay. I need to check. We just released the, sorry, the sorry. professor team just released the draft to us. So, um, oh. But I'm not allowed to tell the teacher. <laughs> 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 yes, I am. <laughs> she said that uh, someone is going to do MS 
future, like a zero three in the count or? Actually, they, they talk about MS10 and okay. MS100. So that's crazy, but uh, that's only a three for products. Always going to do it. So the first is from Germany. Yeah, so the Ahan. Okay. Any other questions? No more? Thank you. Okay, that's a uh, thanks to speak again. I thought thanks to all the speakers. We're now waiting for.